Today on the Nivlac 57 YouTube channel, we're going to go over my 1981 Ford Fairmont station wagon. All right, the history on this car kind of starts off from when I was very young. I've always liked station wagons. Uh, my mom had a station wagon when I was growing up. We never really had minivans. And for whatever reason, I always liked station wagons. My father has always been the type of guy who uh, would build a unassuming car and make it really fast. You know, think V8, Volkswagen Beetles, and that sort of thing. So I've always had an interest in sleepers. What's more sleeper than a station wagon with a whole bunch of horsepower? This combined with my uh, later interest in Hot Rod Drag Week and what better vehicle to take on Hot Rod Drag Week than a station wagon? So combining these two interests of mine, sleeper and station wagon, I've always wanted to build a station wagon that would make ridiculous horsepower and go really fast. I've always had more of a bend towards uh, GM vehicles, but I have always had a fascination with the Fox bodies. So when this came up, it made a lot of sense to uh, satisfy my interest in Fox bodies and my want for a station wagon. So I bought this 26,000 original mile car for 2,000 bucks. We purchased the car in April of 2019 and the goal was to get it to Hot Rod Drag Week 2019, which was in September. We didn't have a lot of time, so we had to start work as soon as possible. To show off some of that work, let's start with the interior. For the interior of the car, I chose to go with as close to stock looking as possible. You'll notice that the factory bench seat is still present, and it even has back seats, seat belts, and all of the other features that would make it look as factory appearing as possible. Now the goal for this car was to build it for the street race category in Hot Rod Drag Week. If you guys aren't familiar with that class, you must run an 850 cert cage in that category. You have to have a full interior and you're not allowed to do anything wild like crazy engine setbacks. One of the cars that I really admired that competes on Drag Week almost every year is the Steinke's 67 Impala, I believe it is. If you guys aren't familiar with that car, it looks like a ratty 67 Impala and they did their very hardest to make the cage not visible from any angle. We tried to do that on this car as best as we could and I think we accomplished that. The only thing that really gives it away if you don't notice the cage is the fancy shifter and the trans brake button. Something neat in the rear of the car is we actually made it so that the cage is not obtrusive and you can still fit passengers into the rear seat. I'm six foot two and my legs are very long and as you can see I can actually fit in the car. Now granted it isn't very comfortable and we can go down the road just like it was a regular station wagon. Also the rear seat still folds down just like it did from the factory. This is by far one of my favorite features of the car because it means you can still fold down the rear seat and fit larger items into the trunk, which comes in handy in a very big way for events like Hot Rod Drag Week. Also, in the back here, this is the first place you can see evidence of how this thing really is a wolf in sheep's clothing. This bar right here that ties into the roll cage 
actually goes back and picks up on all four pickup points for the four link. But to see more of that, let's go underneath the car. Underneath the car, we have a trusty Ford 9 inch rear end. It is a 364 gear ratio, a nodular iron case, and we basically cut off the lower factory four link brackets from the factory housing and adapted them to the nine inch housing. For the upper control arms, we went with a custom made bracket and we went with high mens on the top and solid bushings for the bottom. The car has some Viking double adjustable race shocks. And per the drag week rules of the time, it has the coil spring in the factory location. Anybody that runs a Fox body should be aware that the factory gas tanks basically just suck because they aren't very tall and they don't have any baffling in them in order to keep the fuel slosh to a minimum. Most EFI guys know that getting large internal pumps is much more affordable than external, so I chose to go with a totally different fuel tank that I got from Tanks Incorporated. It is one of their universal truck tanks. We basically cut some holes in it and welded it back together in order to make it so that it used the supplied internal pump for street use and we added a external fitting so that we could run an external pump for race use. I'm very happy with how this tank turned out. It definitely sits up a lot higher. It's a lot easier to strap the car down in the trailer. And it just generally looks and performs so much better than the factory tank. Moving forward in the car, we plan to run this car with a trans brake and therefore the factory four link brackets needed significant reinforcing. Therefore, all four tie-in points were reinforced and set up for lots of horsepower. From there, the four link is tied into a subframe connector, which ties the rear subframe into the front subframe and further stiffens the chassis. My dad did all of the chassis work and we chose to go with a subframe connector, which basically was spliced into the floor and welded to the floor pans. This is, in my opinion, the strongest form of subframe connector on a Fox body chassis. And so far, it has been holding up extremely well. As with most of our cars, we decided to go with the tried and true Trans Brake Turbo 400. I'm a big fan of automatics for drag racing, and there really is no other good choice for the budget that we had. But enough blabbering, let's show you what's under the hood. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we originally installed a six liter LS with two turbos in this car, but I kind of got bored of that because I thought it was pretty generic and I really wanted to show off our skill set and show people that there are other engines out there than just the Turbo LS. Therefore, I chose to install what you guys have seen a lot on this channel, which is a Vortec 4200. On this particular build, I wanted to really showcase our abilities and try to make it as nice as I possibly could. Therefore, I spent a lot of time on the custom intake manifold, the custom oil pan, and the custom exhaust manifold. Now, obviously, as I've said in the past, these engines are not very capable in naturally aspirated form without spending a lot of money. And therefore, we needed some method of cubic inch multiplication. For that, we chose to go with a S480 turbo. We noticed some issues with spark breakup on the dyno, so I've recently installed some IGN-1A coils from our friends at Firepower Race Coils. Overall, I'm extremely satisfied with the looks of this engine bay. Now, one other thing that I need to mention on this build is the engine management. This is the first car that we have run Max ECU with. And if you guys aren't familiar with Max ECU, um, what you need to be aware of is the IO capabilities of 
that box are much more capable than the other ECU options out there as far as a bang for your buck scenario. Therefore, I was able to buy a relatively affordable unit, which allowed me to add all sorts of sensors to monitor and keep track of the health of the engine. As you guys know, these engines are not very common in the performance world, and therefore I wanted to make sure that the health of the engine was being kept track of throughout the duration of the events that we plan to take it on and so I added sensors like a coolant pressure sensor, oil pressure sensor, oil temperature sensor, crankcase pressure sensor, EGTs, compressor in and out temperatures, and I also added a uh, torque converter charge pressure sensor and a transmission line temperature sensor. So with that, I want to end this video off here. I hope you guys enjoyed this overview of one of my favorite cars. And make sure you look forward to seeing this car making lots of passes and competing on drag and drive events in the very near future. Make sure you like and subscribe. Consider joining the channel by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. And we'll see you in the next one.